We've learned in previous videos that relative to the orbital plane around the sun, or the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun, the Earth has a certain tilt. So let me draw the Earth's tilt relative to that orbital plane right over here. So this, if this is the orbital plane right over here, so we're looking right directly sideways on this orbital plane, right sideways along this orbital plane that I've drawn in orange. And maybe at the point in Earth's orbit right now, maybe the sun is to the left. And so the rays from the sun are coming in this general direction. We've learned that Earth has a certain tilt. Earth has a tilt. And when I mean that, it means if you think about the, the axis around which it's rotating, it's not straight up from the orbital plane. It is at an angle. Let me draw that. So if I were to draw an arrow that's coming out of the North Pole, it would look like that. And maybe the, I'll draw an arrow coming out of the South Pole. And the Earth is rotating in that direction right over here. And you notice, this axis that I've, that, that I've drawn this arrow on, it is not straight up and down. And right now, it is an angle uh, av it is an angle, it is at an angle of, it is at an angle of 23. 23.4 degrees with the vertical, with being straight up and down. And we've learned how this is what is the primary cause of our seasons, in that when the northern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun, it's getting a disproportionate amount of the solar radiation. Whatever is going through the atmosphere has to go through less atmosphere, and the things in the northern hemisphere are getting more daylight. And when you go into the, when, you, when the Earth is on the other side of the sun, and it, the northern hemisphere is pointed away from the sun, then the opposite is going to happen, and the reverse is true for the southern hemisphere. But in that video when we talk about how tilt can affect how tilt can affect the seasons, I also kind of hinted a little bit that this is the current tilt right now and over long periods of time that this tilt will change. And in particular, it will vary and even the boundaries for this varying will uh, are different for the past million years than they will be for the next million years, but it varies roughly between 22.1 degrees and 24 Point five degrees, and just to make it clear that it's not going, it's not wobbling back and forth like this. And just to visualize twenty two point one versus twenty four point five, it's not a huge difference. So if this is twenty three point four, and I'm not measuring exactly, maybe pointing in this direction, maybe pointing, maybe pointing in that, maybe twenty two point one would look something like that. In fact, I've exaggerated it, and maybe twenty four point five would go look something like that. And so it's not a huge difference, but it is enough of a difference, so we believe, to actually have a, a significant impact on what the climate is like or what the seasons are like, especially in, t in terms of how, the, how, how, how much of a chance different parts of our, of our planet have a chance to freeze over or not freeze over and all the rest, or how much sunlight they get and all the rest. So it has some impact, but I want to make it clear that it takes a long period of time, that it actually takes 41,000 years to go from a minimum tilt to a maximum tilt and then back to a minimum tilt. 41,000 years. And right now, at a tilt of 23.4 degrees, we're someplace right smack in between. And we, we, we think the last minimum, the, the, or sorry, the last maximum was at was 8700 BCE, before the Common Era, or you could say before Christ. And that the next minimum, when our tilt has been minimized, the next time our tilt will be minimized, will be, will be at at 11,000 in the year 11,800. So this isn't something that's happening overnight, but it is something that could affect our climate over long periods of time. And this is just one factor and sometimes this changing of the tilt, a fancier word for tilt is sometimes given is obliquity. Obliquity, but this is really just a fancy word for tilt. This this changing of the obliquity or changing of the tilt is one of these changes in Earth's rotation or Earth's orbit around the sun that might have long-term uh, cycles or effects on Earth's climate, and maybe they do help cause certain ice ages when they when they act it together with each other over certain cycles. And broadly, this entire class of cycles are called Milankovitch cycles. Milankovic. He was a Serbian scientist who was the guy who theorized that these changes in Earth's orbit 
might be responsible for long-term climate change, or maybe some cycles where we enter ice ages and get out of ice ages, or we have more extreme or less extreme weather. So these are Milankovitch, Milankovitch, Milankovitch cycles. And changes in the tilt, or the obliquity, are just one of the possible factors playing into Milankovitch cycles. And what I want to do in this video and the next view is talk about all of the different factors, or at least uh, summarize all of the different factors. Now another one, this one is pretty intuitive for me, that this tilt can change. One that's a little bit less intuitive when you first think about it is something called precession. Um, and I Precession, precession. And the idea behind precession, I guess the best analogy I can think of, is if you imagine a top, or maybe you can imagine Earth as a top right over here. The top is spinning. The top is spinning in this direction. And obliquity tells you essentially how much it's wobbling. I'm, well, actually, let me think of it this way. Imagine a wobbling top. So it's rotating like this. It's tilted. And then it's also, it is also. It is also, if you imagine that this was a pole up here that's coming out of the pole, if this was actually a physical arrow, that that arrow itself, that arrow itself would be rotating. So what you, the best way to think about it is a wobbling top. If you think if at, after some point of time, this thing would wobble, so it would look like, so it would look like this. So now the arrow is pointing that way. And if you wait a few more seconds, now maybe the arrow, now maybe the arrow is pointing. A little bit out of the page, and then you wait a few more seconds, then it's pointing in this direction, then it's pointing into the page. And so, this whole time, the obliquity isn't changing. The obliquity, you can kind of view it as how far, how far is that wobble? You could imagine how far from vertical is that wobble, and no matter where we are in that rotation, it hasn't changed. And you can imagine it as the precession as where we are in the wobble. Where we are in the wobble, and I want to. This is a little bit hard to visualize, and hopefully, as we think about it in different ways, and I draw different diagrams, it'll make it a little bit clearer. But I want to make it clear, just as, just as it takes a long time for the for the inclination to change from a minimum value to a maximum value and back, it takes a huge amount of time for. Earth's precession to change in a significant way. So for for this top to kind of for if you imagined this this arrow popping out for this arrow to actually trace out an entire loop, it takes 26,000 years. So 26,000 years to have an entire cycle of precession. Now what I want to do is think about given that this precession is occurring, I want to think about how that would affect our seasons or how it would actually affect how we think about the year, the calendar. So let's draw the orbit of Earth around the sun. So here is my sun right over here, and here is the orbit of Earth. And I'm not going to think too much. I'm going to assume that it's almost circular for the sake of this video. In future videos, we'll talk about how the eccentricity or how elliptical the orbit is can also affect the Milankovitch cycles or play into the Milankovitch cycles. But let's just draw the orbit of Earth. Let me just draw the orbit of Earth around the sun over here. And so you can imagine this is at one point in time. This is the Earth. Let's say it is, let's say it is tilted towards the sun right now. So it is tilted towards the sun. And so if in the northern hemisphere, and I'm assuming this arrow is coming out of the North Pole, this would be the summer in the northern hemisphere. And then if you had no precession, absolutely no precession, when you go to this time of year, you still have the same direction of tilt. You say you still have, let me do that in blue. You still have the same the same direction of tilt. We're still pointing to the same part of the universe. We still have the same north star. You go to this time, we're still tilting in the same direction relative to the universe, but we're now tilting away from the sun. And now this would be the winter in the northern hemisphere. And we'd keep going around. If you had no precession, when you get back to this point over here, we'd be tilting in the exact same direction. You may if your if your if your obliquity or your change if your tilt changed a little bit, you might move up or down away or towards the sun a little bit. But this is all assuming no precession. Now I'm going to think about what happens if you do have precession. So what's happening with precession is when you go around one time around the sun, by the time you get to this point again, you're not pointing at exactly the same direction. You're now pointing a little bit further. So this arrow, this let me draw a little bit bigger. 
So this is the Earth. And this is that arrow. And this is hard to visualize, or at least it's hard for me to visualize. I, I, well, once you get it, it's easier to visualize. But the first time I tried to understand it, it was hard for me to understand how precession was different than obliquity, or different than tilt. Obliquity is how much we're going from, from vertical. And so if we had no precession, we would be exactly pointing in that same direction every year. Now, if we, with just precession alone, what happens is every year, this this arrow is slowly tracing out a circle, slowly tracing out a circle that goes like this. So I'm going to exaggerate how much it, it's happening, just so that you can visualize it. So maybe after several years, that arrow is not, when you're at that same point relative to the sun, that same point in the solar system, that arrow is no longer pointing in that direction. It has now traced out a little bit of that circle. So it is now pointing, it is now pointing in this direction. It is now pointing in this direction. So if it is now pointing in this direction, will that same point in the solar system, that same uh, point relative to the sun, that same exact point in the orbit, will it still be the, the, the summer in the northern hemisphere? Well, it won't, because we're now not pointing directly, or we're not most inclined to the sun at that point. Now we would have been most inclined to the sun a little bit earlier in the year, or a little bit earlier in the orbit. So we would have been most inclined to the sun we would have been most inclined to the sun maybe over here. Maybe over here. And it would take a many, many, many actual thousands of years for it to get to be, uh, uh, to, for, for the procession to change this much. But then at, over here, this is where, when, at this point in that year, when, when we would be pointed most towards the sun. So what the, the real effect of procession is, is doing to our seasons and doing to what our sense of what our year is, is that every year, relative to our orbit on Earth, because Earth is kind of a top that's slowly circling, that's slowly tracing out this circle with, I guess you could say, with its pole, what it's doing is, is it's making it, it's making it tilt towards the sun or away from the sun a little bit earlier each year, a little bit earlier. I know it's hard to visualize, but you could even take a top out and have, I don't know, have a basketball as the sun. And if you play with it, you'll see how that works. And the and precession is another one of those factors that affect that that play into, I should say, the Milankovitch cycles. And what we'll see is when you combine precession, when you combine, or I should say, change in precession, when you ha combine that with changes in tilt, and you combine that with changes in actual uh, uh, how circular or how elliptical the actual orbit is and how that changes, then you might have a, 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 a respectable way of explaining, what, or some of explaining, why Earth has entered into these climactic cycles over many tens of thousands of years.